But I'm just saying, like, I don't want to be like a team like the Rams. Like, I don't want to be a team like the, the Eagles that use a that trade up, use a top <laughs> three pick on a quarterback. They right. done traded assets and then they have to move on from them in five years. Like, like I would rather just, you know, but if they it's got, like, I mean, did you know? they get rings? Yeah, but I mean, you know, like, I mean, do I mean it ended up they didn't have you to said, you said they accidentally, you know. Like they won that ring, they won those rings with a backup quarterback. And I mean, like, hell, if you look at golf, dude, golf, like they traded golf to get a ring. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at Blake Bortles. That was a top three pick. And it looked, I mean, you know, he wasn't good in the end. Like, my thing is like, I just don't want to have to do that. You know, I don't want them to like it's one thing if you're solo on a guy and you take him and you miss, but I just don't want us to take a guy that and I, I mean, trust them. I trust them, bro. Statistically, hey, so it might not work out mm -hmm. the way we all envision it if we get a first round pick because like I was saying the other day that and I don't want to misquote myself but it was like 30% because I had this shit in front of me of first round quarterbacks succeed like that's crazy yeah. and what, you mean, what they meant by succeeding was like championships pro bowls all stuff yeah. yeah, it get, it gets less. The percentages get less and less as the further you get down on the on the rounds. Um, but that happens. My thing is, if like Leo said, if they take one, just imagine if Anthony Richardson is sitting there in the top of the second round. Oh, you can't you can't pass. You can't, pa you can't pass that you up. Can't, like you know, you I don't can't pass, pass that talent up because if if you're gonna go best talent available or best player available, right. You have to go ahead and draft and draft him, and then roll with what it, whatever the you know consequences is after that. Yeah, because sure. like it's just like you know, I mean, any any situation can happen. Like, I mean, hell, like you could Mills could go down and never play again. Sure. <laughs> I mean, knock on wood. And my thing is like when you look at a guy like Anthony Richardson, you know, assuming he has a good year, you know, what I'm saying, and he's there, you know, even in the late first round, like, even if you believe in Mills, it's just like you're looking at a guy that is six foot four, 240, all muscle, runs a four four, you know, what I'm saying, can't throw the ball 70 yards. I mean, you just develop them. And I mean, I mean, to me, like, what, like, why, why is it a bad thing? My thing is, like, why is it a bad thing to have a great quarterback on them? I'm not saying it's a bad thing. No, no. Yeah. I'm just saying that the path that we're going to have to take in order to get one mm -hmm. is either really, really quick or really, really far away. Yeah. And so we got to make a decision mm -hmm. on whether or not, like I said, the first six games for me yeah. on whether or not Davis Mills is our dude. And it's just a tough world. Now, he might sit back, learn some shit, come out swinging. That has never mm -hmm. happened. Well, I think maybe a couple of cases in NFL history. Yeah. Or – he completely falls off and everybody was right <laughs> consciously. Yeah. So his question. So you rather you rather these next two next next two drafts mm -hmm. with our first our four first round picks mm -hmm. get only skill guys. And if Mills is not the guy, use that use our one pick in three years from now and hopefully a quarterback call fall for us. No, what? no, no. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. Like, I mean, I know it can sound like that, but like, all I'm saying is that like, I just, I just don't pass up on town. I won't pass up on a guy that or, or any position that I think is like a, is a, is a unique talent. You know what I'm saying? So like that being, that's, that means that like the reason why the main reason that I'm against taking CJ Stroud right now is that I just don't, I can't, you can't convince me that he's a better prospect than Jalen Carter or Anderson. I would take, yeah, I would take definitely for me personally, just as, cause we all have our preferences, preferences on how we would like our, our teams built. But for me, mm -hmm. I would take Will Anderson no matter what next year and figure out my quarterback shit later. But yet yeah. my defense is still top 10 because now I got this monster mm -hmm. that can keep you from scoring. And now mm -hmm. I got Lubby Smith in 2012 situation with was mm -hmm. with Grossman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Defense yeah. was outstanding. Mm -hmm. Grossman was terrible. Yeah, yeah. I would I'd give a left pinky for that situation. I think and I think it's it's easier to it's easier to improve the, the room, the quarterback room, like 
you know what I'm saying, going for. I think you could find, like, you could find a, a buck, like, at the end of the day, bro, you can find a, a better quarterback than a goddamn Rex Grossman. You so two him. points, two points, two points. The influx of quarterback talent that's coming in the league mm-hmm. and, you know, and the not so much of the turnover allows you to have the availability to get a very talented quarterback mm-hmm. who probably didn't get an opportunity somewhere because you have all these quarterbacks in the league. Yeah, right. It's, this is a quarterback heavy league as far as like, uh, you know, it's at least 12 teams or, or 15 teams for damn sure know that this is going to be their quarterback for the next 10, 15 years. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then second point I wanted to make is that when you draft and you can't draft for me because the, te- mm-hmm. so the Texans worst draft picks have been because they drafted for need. Huh. You know, you drafted a Mobile Okoye for a need because you needed a defensive tackle, not because he was the best player at that point in time. They drafted him like number 11. Mm-hmm. He was a 19 year old defensive tackle, was not the best player at number 11 in the whole draft. That's that, you know, that's, you talk that's, about that's bash, true, also, I think it was more or less him not leaving up, living up to what he was supposed with what what he was projected to do because the boy they needed a defensive tackle. The boy was nice at that point in time, but that that defense needed a defensive tackle. Yeah, more than they get it done. Then needed anything else, and they went and got a defensive tackle, supposedly the best defensive tackle, you know, on the board. But at that time, you did that out of need. Ross Clock was a need pick. Lonnie Johnson was a need pick. Like all of these bad draft picks that they've had, CJ Flores was a need pick. Mm. You can keep going down the line of all the failed bad draft picks of the Houston Texans. They were need picks. Mm. They, were, you know, best player available picks. You know, when has the Texans, other than Jadavion Clowney, Mario Williams, had an opportunity, you know, in the first round to pick best player available? You know, DeAndre Hopkins was a best player available pick. You know, it's Jack Sealy. Jack uh, Sealy was the best. Sealy. Yeah, like, Jack Sealy was the best player available pick. You uh, know. Well, so what you think about that, Jesus? I, I mean, was Stingley because Hutchinson over there from Detroit? But he was picked before. We talking about the, at the Houston. Come on, available. Yeah, available. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, best player available. DeAndre Hopkins was the best player available at 26. Okay. They drafted him. He was the best player available. Derek Stingley was the best player available at number three. Like Derek Stingley, I think, showed that that he like at one point he was the like arguably like the best player in college football, the best player on the defensive side of the ball. For like and so like when you think about the upside, I think that was just like a pure upside, like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know. So like my thing, you know, and I just think that you know you look at these teams. I mean, we're in a we're in a great spot to where like, you know, what I'm saying we could be fluid and like we could just get the guy the best guy on the board for the next few years, and then at that point we could we have this mass of like of talent. We got this talent. Like, this, now this now I can figure out where is my weakness. Where is the actual weakness? Because like what my team, team like, did that. It was a team. I can't remember the team who drafted heavy defense. And, and was it the Niners that did that? That went heavy defense. defense yeah, they drafted line. defense. They drafted defensive line like three or four years. And people was like tripping. Yeah. But here we are. You feel me? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. They're terror. Yeah. yeah, and you can't fucking block them. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know. But but also they they had, they had to trade up um, value of trade picks to get a, a quarterback that could win the game for them too because they they got there. They couldn't pull the trigger. Yeah. So you're gonna you're you're gonna eventually got to pay for a top end quarterback. Yeah, yeah. That's gonna be that's gonna be now. It's gonna be later. You got you got pick your poison. But, I mean, this, but see, this, this this is my thing going with the quarterback thing. Look at all the influx with these veteran quarterbacks that got moved around. But I mean, we're good though, Ad. Huh? I mean, but I'm saying like there you. That's a good point. If how many? Saying, how many? How many, how many gonna take but, us to but, but I'm saying, okay, going going back, we were talking about Riz Grossman. If you're right. in a situation where your defense 
was that ridiculous. And that defense alone, alone could get you to the Super Bowl. To win the Super Bowl, you can win the Super Bowl with Baker Mayfield. As bad as Baker Mayfield is, he's better than damn Rex Grossman. Okay, so here's my here's my corner point. No, you if you if you if you can win a damn Super Bowl with Jimmy Garoppolo, who's better than Rex Grossman? They they did. So let, let me let me now okay. that leads me to a lot of different things, and I don't know if you want to do the intro about you know this is the Black Owned Texan podcast. Um, dudes, get your point, get your point, Keys. You get your point, and then I yeah. yeah. My point is the very great defense that one year ain't touched Super Bowl since then. You have a great quarterback. You, you, you put yourself in position almost every year. So I understand great defenses can win Super Bowl, but it's going to be the like, 2000 Ravens when they got Super Bowl one year, then they went destined to Leicester four years because all right. the great defenses in the world, even Tampa Bay in 2002, had that one great Super Bowl year, but then they were trash the rest of the year because they put it back to the years to get back. True, but isn't it, and I agree to the point, but isn't it something to be said for a quarterback making it to the Super Bowl? I give to you, but do you, do you want just to make it and 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 can't, no, 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 no. can't, but, but, can't but, beat it? But again, a lot of life is just about making it because not everybody gets you on the dig. Tom Brady I, I got six it. rings. I get it. So what I'm what I'm saying is, a lot of people in Buffalo love Jim Kelly. Right. He got him there six. You feel me? Four so, times. That's why I didn't understand a lot of the hate on the sensitive subject of Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. Coming in because people are like, well, why would you do that? I'm like, why wouldn't you? I would take, I would take Jimmy. You know, but I, I, I would take Jimmy. You know, I have Jimmy right now. I'll give, I'll give, I'll give so a second round pick right now for Jimmy. If my my thing, like, and, and I mean, it's just like, like, I just feel like, like how AD said, there's so many, there's so many great quarterbacks coming in hmm. that, like, as long as you're fluid and you're okay with just spending capital throughout the draft on them. You're gonna hit eventually, like, like you know, we we just did Mills. Let's say we fuck around and get like insert quarterback in the second, third round next year, and then you know, because you know, let's say we didn't like any player on the board and we got a quarterback and we just develop them too, and then you know that then the next year, okay, now we we have a clear ex- exponentially better read on Mills now, and we like this quarterback and we're picking top five in this class. You know what I'm saying? And now I have the flexibility to be like, now I, I have a good quarterback room already. I see a quarterback that I'm in position to take. There is nothing that I just want. I just want it to be like, there is nothing that is. You don't want to pigeonhole. Huh? You don't want to pigeonhole. There's no, yeah, yeah. I mean, cause like I, I said, bro, if you get like, think about like what, what, like Tannehill, like what happened with Tannehill, for instance, like, like they put themselves in perfect position in perfect position that if Tannehill goes out and plays like he did the year before this year, before he was throwing four picks a game and shit, like, they're cool because he's just a developing backup. If 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 he goes in there and you know, let's say he gets hurt and, and Malik comes in and he plays terrible and then they have a top three pick and they love C.J. Stroud, they put themselves in position to get C.J. Stroud if they love him. Then, then another thing, like, let's say – that Malik so you're saying Thompson. take it while you can get it. Yeah, like I mean, bro, like you know, you it's like that's why I say like after this draft, I want like I I like I want my team to be solid in the in the trenches, bro. But like I would like I I understand why they took Stingley, bro, because like I mean, hell, when you look at it, I mean, you see Icky Icky comes out and has, he has a his shoulders fucked up, and then you worry about his pass blocking. Mm. Evan Neal, his hip and his knee is fucked up. And you know, blah blah blah. And then Stingley at this point, outside of that, they say the injury is healing. And you seen what he did. You look at the circumstance of why he didn't necessarily perform the best the last two years of his college career. It's like, well, okay, fuck it. Let's like like how many times are we gonna have a chance to get a corner like that? How many teams can you look at their at they at they situation and be like, damn, they got a top five corner? It's not that many teams that have a top five corner. So like so- my your choice, if you could redraft again, you would take Stingley anyway. Oh, yeah, 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 bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because, like, I can't lie. I was heavy on Evan Neal, and I think that if they would have took Evan Neal, it wouldn't have necessarily been a bad thing. But once I seen the injury shit popping up and I seen it over and over again, I'm like, okay, this is real. Like, teams is failing. He's failing their, his physical. And then right. it made me start looking at it like, 
unbiased completely. And then I was like, damn, like you could literally say Derek Stingley is the best player in this draft. And then I'm like, okay, well, we have a chance to get that at number three. You take it. And, I mean, I know yeah. that no, nobody would say start a rebuild off with a cornerback. Nobody would ever say that. But it's like – But it's been I done. Sean I mean, Springs. Uh, Deion Sanders. Camp Bailey was kind of part of one. Yeah. I mean, but but it's not – like, you know, it's, it's not conventional. You know, yeah. I wouldn't say it's conventional. You know what I mean? And so, like, my thing is, like, but but you know I would rather I would rather just you know I mean fuck yeah, David Ramsey you know think about it. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, bro. We got first we got four first round picks. If we ain't sat the males, use one of them. Yeah, but but bro, like, there's gonna be a quarterback there eventually right. where it makes perfect sense okay. to take. But still, three first rounders. I mean, four first rounders. Or you gotta use one of them. Like <laughs> if you just if you say you know what. You know what? I'm already happy just saying, you know what? Next year I'm bringing in four first, four first rounders. No shit. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. First but, this thing, but this is the thing also is that you have the perfect opportunity to maximize and capitalize and gain even more first round capital. You can you have a chance oh, yeah. to get your capital, you know, with the two first round picks even more. Like if you say, let's say we got the number three pick again. And the first pick was was Will Anderson. The second pick was um, Jalen Carter. Yeah. Yeah, damn, that was the two best players in the draft. We got the third pick, and then the best player is C.J. Stroud. But you got teams like Detroit calling. You got teams like, you know, um, Carolina calling. So you can say we could possibly end up moving back and ending up, up another yeah. third move or another Move back. Mm-hmm. Move but, back. Mm-hmm. But you are, if you're picking third, that means Mills is trash. Not necessarily. We're going to run at it again? Hold on. But hold on, Jules. But hold on, Jules. We just said, we just said that we want a defensive line, right? It, but even if he is, Preferably. he is trash. Even if he is trash, just one, once again, like I said, quote unquote, this is the best quarter. You can find multiple starters. Whoopty, whoopty, whoop. You don't want CJ Stroud. Let's say you don't want CJ Stroud. Bryce Young, I want CJ. huh? I want CJ. Right, but I'm just saying this is about what what the Texans will want. Let's say if they don't if they don't feel like CJ Stroud, what they what they want prototypical size, prototypical arm strength. You know, if he don't have taking so, and whatever, we move it. We move it. and you yeah you and you trade that pick down. Mm-hmm. Mind you, you trade down with Detroit. Detroit is number five. Yeah, I mean, what are you really missing out on? Yeah. <laughs> If the if you number three, just number four, Detroit number five, mm-hmm. you're taking a no quarterback. Yeah, they not taking. No, a I don't. I don't mind moving back. You still can get Bryce Young, and who's to say that Detroit will want C.J. Stroud? Who's to say Detroit will want Bryce Young? Yeah, you know what? I don't I mean? mind moving back. I just want to make sure that we're taking the cream of the crop while we can. Yeah, yeah, and not trying to maximize getting the. Post now, picks. if there's a game-changing yeah. talent, which none of these players have proved to be, right? And, but if and there it. is one, okay, yeah. package it. But yeah. if there isn't somebody that knocks your socks off, mm-hmm. take four scoops at the top or the, or the, at the cream of the crop. Don't take mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Take yeah. four scoops of it. But but like see, in, in this draft, in this draft coming up, I think there's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of really really good players in this draft. It's gonna be a lot of trades. Huh? It's gonna be a lot of trades. And, trades and I mean, like was issue. You yeah. see, my thing is like what what I what I would want is that I want all these quarterbacks to play well, so that even let's say the Cleveland pick is number twenty, and like let's say let's say Anthony Richardson is there at number twenty, and someone is like, "What? Well, you know what? Fuck it!" Like the the uh, who's a team that has an old quarterback that is a Super Bowl contender? Like shit. I mean, uh, Bucks. Like, yeah, let's say the Bucks is like, you know what, bro? Like, fuck it. We, you know, we came real close. Brady's old. You know, let's just give up our first next year, get this to move up and get this guy. He sits a year and then, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, like, I want everybody to do well. And I, I think, like, my thing is that, like, two, I mean, with Mills, bro, like, I mean, Jules, to, to your point, we literally just had a top five quarterback and still won four games with the motherfucker. So, I mean, but I, 
you know, I, I think that like, you know, it's like Mills can go out there and, and, and shut and, and shut shit down and we still be dog shit. I'm not say I shouldn't have said it like that. And yeah. still have a dog shit record. So like But yeah, but don't don't, don't but how don't, likely don't, is that to happen? Watts his last year when he no, had I'm just saying, bro, he Chad was top Hinson five. He was the top five quarterback. quarterback. He was he top had Chad Henson his main quarterback with no line and no running back either. Yeah, oh, but man. I mean, bro, like, how much different is this team than that team? I mean, I don't think like, I mean, up until this, I mean, you know, I'm just saying, like, you know, I'm just I saying. Got you. Got you. We, we, we can move on. Hey, this, 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 is, this is the thing. This is the thing. This roster is bad. We call it. Not as bad people think it is. Huh? Not as bad people think it is. No, it's not as bad, but it is a bad roster. It is a bad roster. Does, because I asked this question, because you have fans out there that, that, that are just gung-ho that this is the worst roster in the NFL. And I asked a simple question. Who is the best quarterback in the league? People say Patrick Mahomes. People say Tom Brady. People say, who do, you know, Aaron Rodgers. They give all their names. So I said, if if Patrick Mahomes is the top quarterback in his league, does Patrick Mahomes take this team to the playoffs? You know, he could take, take wins. It that's that's my, but you know what I'm saying. He doesn't get you to the playoffs with this roster. So even if you have a Deshaun Watson on this roster, do you make the playoffs? You know what I mean? Yeah, but you so, know, y'all say y'all can, y'all can get talent. Y'all can get See, top that, talent oh, for creative well, bro, like, and that's what I'm saying. That's a good I'm, ass. I'm that's a good ass trap question. Hey, and I'm so then, and so then, and then, with that being said, you have Sean Watson, but you don't have two first, two more first round picks to load your team up anymore. Yeah, so, yeah you know, you, you know, yeah, yeah. So now you have, you have to, you have to strike. You have to hit a home run for these every first round picks that you have, because you don't have multiples anymore. You don't have an opportunity to fuck up. When you have this first, this, if you win eight games or seven games with Deshaun this year, you only have that one pick, which is your own. So, so, you, so for, for us going right, forward. You, right. I'm just I'm just forward. saying, I'm just saying, like, you have to you have to operate in that sense. If you had your quarterback, how would you draft? Because you don't have the capital to do so. If you if you had to go get a quarterback, let's just say. If next year isn't the year, and you're talking about the following year with Quinn Ewers or Caleb Williams or whoever, let's say they give Mills another year. You still have two first-round picks. Do you think if you drafted well again, you drafted well this past year, and you draft well again, and your team is is moving along, Mm -hmm. do you think you'll have the draft? And then by that time, Deshaun Watson is a full go. They got a full season with Cleveland with a loaded roster. That pick is going to be in the bottom of the first round. So now you're talking about a Texans team that's, bad, you know, French top 10 record-wise because your team should improve to that point where you number eight, number nine, number 10. Mm-hmm. Number eight, nine, 10 pick. And, you know, let's just, you know, put it out there. I, I, they may be number 12, depending, whatever it is. But in that range between eight and 12, mm-hmm. and does that pick plus – you know, the number 29, 28, 26 pick, between 26 and 30, does that pick get you to number three or number two or number one? Does I mean, those combinations get you there to get that quarterback? I don't think I don't think it does necessarily, but, but what I will say, because I think most of the teams that do that shit, if it was me, I wouldn't want all my picks in one draft because that's like literally giving up nothing, like, if we have two exactly. picks and you're, and you're and you're crazy enough to let me give you twelve and twenty nine to move up, like no, nah, I'm gonna want twelve. I'm gonna want I'm gonna want the next, the next year, one, the next yes. year, and then I'm gonna want the next one. And then if you want to sweeten the pot to make me feel better about it, I'm gonna ask for that. Yeah, I and 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 I disagree. I I disagree. I think with the talent that this team has in scouting, mm-hmm. you see what we just did in the last draft. If you give them four opportunities to pick out of the top 32 players in the, in the nation, mm-hmm. I think they're going to go three for four. I think whether or not, whether it's a low pick or a high first or a low first pick, I think they're going to get effective people because they've proven, mm-hmm. right, well, what they've brought in mm-hmm. that they can scout. Yeah, yeah. So I disagree. I think that 
you don't move up, whether they're high or low, mm -hmm. they, they can they can they can get some good starting plug and play talent because mm -hmm. they've already proven it. And that's that's, that's what, what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying too. Like if you get if you get these quarterbacks that are toolsy that just need refinement, you know what I'm saying? You might end up with a, a plus 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 starter that that like has no pressure on them until it's time to go out there and play. You know what I'm saying? So we, so, I think that 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 we've been kind of like it's conditioned to like want to get a top to, to spend a high pick on the quarterback. And I feel like, I feel like what's about to start happening is there's always going to be teams that do that. There's always going to be team because there's always going to be quarterbacks that end up warranting the top five pick that will be. But my thing is that I feel like we've seen so many top teams just do this shit and fuck up over and over again. That it's like, like, bro, like look at this draft, like, like, Bro, you got teams that might end up with their franchise quarterbacks in the fifth round, in the third round, in the second round. One of them, one of these guys that was taken in this draft that's not Ritter, Ritter, Ritter Willis, Pickett were the three top quarterbacks in the draft. It was Pickett, Willis, and Ritter. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they and they and they weren't they weren't talented. They weren't ultra talented either. Those right. cats weren't talented. I think that they had all the tools. Like, I think, I think, I think Willis has everything that it takes to be successful. I <laughs> think the talent was there. I think that the production behind the talent was not there mm. because of their situations. Look at where Malik Malik Willis was in a D two school. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like it, he could have put up seven thousand yards passing and fifty touchdowns, but he was in a D two school. You know what I mean? I, I, and plus, I don't think we have a quarterback whisperer on this team. I, 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 mean, I, I, said I, I mean, Pep Hamilton's supposed to be that. You know? that, goes to be. Into that. That goes into that whole conundrum and, and, and Pandora's box. Exactly. So what I'm saying is, let's play to our strength. Mm -hmm. What's that? Love be the head coach. Yeah, <laughs> defense. defense. Run the fucking ball. <laughs> Run the fucking ball. And let's smack some motherfuckers in their mouth. And I, we all know that's not how the game plays. Hey, but right. shit, no, you can still play. Hey, San Francisco do. San Francisco yeah. do. And, okay. they, and, when they, and when they got tired of it, they traded first round piece to get a quarterback. Yeah. No, but, then, but, 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 no like, they did that, but then they turned their wide receiver into a running back. Bro, like, right. like peep, peep this, dog. Oh. San Francisco did that shit. My bad, George. But San Francisco, no, you can... that, like, do you really think that he's not, like, like, like if you're going to run the ball, you have to maximize the times that you throw the ball. The problem with Jimmy G is that that motherfucker, like, they will run the ball, set up the shot play. He overthrowing, uh, what's his name, by 10 yards yeah. of the Super Bowl. And, and, but that's what, that's what y'all want. Y'all want a subpar quarterback. No, that's not what I'm No, no, no. I'm not saying that. Like, and that's why I'm saying, like, why does that, like, how does what I'm saying mean I want a subpar quarterback? I don't want a subpar you, you, quarterback. Because you want a one, and you, you want to keep skipping. No, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that I'm not going to miss. I don't want to miss when I take it. I want to. It's a gamble. It's a gamble. No matter what you do. Even, even, so even, I mean, even, hold on. Hold on. Let me say this. Let me, let me say this. Gambles. To, go, to Jules' point, how many teams, after watching these first two preseason games, mm. teams like Carolina, you know, teams like Washington, mm. Do you, you know, teams that, that traded for mid-tier quarterbacks, do you think that they said, damn, even though we traded for, even though we drafted a Matt Corral or we drafted a Sam Howell, we could have had a Kenny Pickett or Malik Willis right there. Yeah, yeah. And we passed on them. Yeah. We felt I like. Think, I think most of the times that just, that's just, I think the organizations know that, once you get a guy in, that's your guy. I know they they probably think and be like, man, I could have had this guy. I could have had this guy. But I think once you roll the dice and you go, it's it's really nothing you can do about what you who you didn't take. Right. You see what I'm saying? I only got one point. I got one point. I'm going we, we, we'll start the show because we ain't start the show yet. So my question <laughs> is, everybody keeps saying quarterbacks can fail. Defense star players can fail too. Mm -hmm. Russell can fail too. So so regardless of the situation, you're taking a gamble on anybody. So 
whatever your premise is, don't don't act like the like what else is 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 not bust proof. Nobody's I mean, bust proof. Yeah. Well, I'm trying. All I'm saying is that like I I'm looking at it like I'm saying D line. I'm saying I said Will Anderson. I like Kayshawn Boutte. If Kayshawn Boutte go off and have and have damn near a Jamar Chase like year, and he got 15 t- touchdowns and like and he got 1500 yards and he runs a four three. And, and, and the boy from uh, Ohio, from, from LSU. 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 I'm just using him as an example. Like and he's even Addison, even Addison, <laughs> and, like, like, does he warrant a top ten pick? Yes, he does. Like, yes. yeah. So like, you're so what I'm so saying, I mean, so what I'm saying is that like, well, no, nah, bro. I, I'm gonna be honest. I don't, I don't see what everybody else sees in CJ Stroud. That's, but ultimately, I don't. Like, if I did, if I did, bro, and this is what I've said before. Like, 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 if, if I did. Like CJ Stroud and Mills played good, but we had the ch- chance to draft CJ Stroud. I wouldn't be opposed to drafting CJ Stroud. I, be, I just don't. I just don't think. I just don't. I, don't <laughs> I just don't see it, bro. So, so let me go back to my logic that I that I said. The reason why I don't care for CJ Stroud, this is just me. Why I don't care, is that every great quarterback in the NFL has had some form of adversity. If you draft C.J. Stroud, you're drafting the quarterback that has had zero adversity. He has walked in and been basically give-handed. Tyler Murray. Tyler, what you mean? Tyler Murray ain't never lost either. No, no, no. Until he got, until he got with the uh, Cardinals and they started losing right. that big-ass attitude switch. Hold on, hold on. Tyler Murray did have adversity. He had, he had three schools adversity, yeah. Yeah, Kyler Murray did have adversity. Kyler Murray went to AM thing thinking he was going to be the starting quarterback, then win the job. Mm. Had to transfer schools and then wait damn near two years to play. He only played one full year of college football and got drafted number one overall. And, and, and what, did we say, what did we say yesterday? To the most quarterback friendliest yeah. offensive college quarterback Every, of all time. Everywhere he went, everywhere he went has been quarterback friendly. A and M at the time with Kevin Sumlin, super quarterback friendly. He produced the Case Keenum's. He produced, you know, the Cliff, you know, all the Cliff Kingsbury. He had a hand. But that's, that's kind of to my point is the fact that he's always been coddled. Like right now, but I'm right, but it's the adversity got, part. His, huh? It's the adversity part. Like being coddled, yeah, he's been coddled. But at the same point in time. He, there was no expectation for him to actually sit down anywhere. Baseball. Whether it be in Oklahoma, because he had to sit behind Baker. He had to wait a year for Baker. After he had already sat a year, he had to wait another year and sit on the bench. And he was mad about it. And was mad about it. And then, he, because he was damn near about to transfer then. He was about to okay. transfer then. And, but, but I go down the list, Tom Brady. You remember what Tom Brady had to deal with in Michigan? Michigan. You know, Patrick Mahomes. Do you know what the fuck Texas Tech was? And what the hell they and he had to damn near, he had to go through a quarterback controversy his damn self. With Baker Mayfield, not Baker Mayfield, but the other guy, whatever the man that, that went to UT or something that, that transferred. It was mm-hmm. a controversy then with Patrick Mahomes. Aaron Rodgers. What am I thinking of? Had to go to Aaron Rodgers with the draft. And then yeah, Aaron Rodgers with the draft and Brent Favre. Yeah. Adversity. You know who else? What's the other? What's the next quarterback in line? Give me, give me another quarterback, top quarterback. I mean, hell, Watson. Hey, Manny. Peyton Matt? No, no. I'm nah, talking he, about the league right now. I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about his job. It was great. Peyton Manning had, had adversity in, in Tennessee. Yeah, rape right case. <laughs> hey. Well, damn! Now hey, you get it. You get it. You put the bad shit out there. You get, it, you get it. You get it. How you get it? But every every great quarterback that that has been the, every great modern quarterback has had some form of adversity. If you go through every top every, if you want to say your top ten quarterbacks, because people want to say, well, Joe Burrow didn't have no adversity. Why the hell he didn't that that first year at LSU? Bro, I mean, not even even LSU. before that. Even before, right. but when he was trying to transfer from Ohio State, right, because he got beat Alabama, up. Alabama told him that he would be like a fifth string quarterback. Yeah. Nebraska didn't even damn near want to offer him. You know what I'm saying? And then you know, so yeah, I mean, I mean, my thing. So, that so you logic, think you prefer that logic, a quarterback in the later rounds? 
No, no, not necessarily. But this is this is my theory on why Davis Mills may actually hit. He actually went through adversity. He, he don't he don't cry about it. He don't cry about shit. He fucking Thank got you. hurt. He fucking Deshaun Watson. Yeah. Thank you. Towards ACL twice at Clemson. Adversity. Like you can keep going down the lead. Lamar Jackson. Adversity. Like every quarterback that you want to name that's top 10, top 15 in this league. Kirk Cousins. Even you can even say Kirk Cousins. Mm. Adversity. Dak Prescott mm-hmm. has had adversity or a situation that they had to come out of and okay. So your point, your point, your point is proven. Your point is proven. We need a quarterback that's 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 headstrong and then been through some shit. Right. Who is that? You're saying that's not Stroud? Hell no. I mean, I, I think uh, like what has Stroud? What has Stroud? What adversity has Stroud been through? What had? What has he had to had to overcome? We I mean, come. I think, I think yeah. Stroud, like, this is one thing with Stroud, bro. Just talking about his game, because I'm not, I'm not even going to get into all that shit AD is. But I just, it's just like, when I look at Ohio State, bro, and their competition, and this shit, like, bro, I bothers people when I say this, but it's real. Like, when you look no, at I, I, I'm going to agree with what you're about to say. I think I know where you're going. When, when you look at the competition and his team and every other team in the Big 12, Joe's already shaking his head. Like, <laughs> like he, you know. I see clean pockets. I see clean pockets. I see wide open wide receivers. receivers. And I see him just – and then, like, when they're not wide open, he's throwing the ball, and it's a – it's like – it's a good ball. Like, he has great accuracy. But I'm seeing Olave. I'm seeing Garrett Wilson turn into goddamn Lynn Swan and, like, snag over niggas' head. I'm seeing, like, Smith and Jay, but catch the ball. Bro, this dude caught a ball. Like, like – Oh, yeah. Right here. He caught a ball in front of the dude. While the defender was facing him, pulled it in and caught it, bro. And I'm like, then I come in the spaces, and it's like people talking about, like, well, Davis Mills threw a would-be interception. I'm like, but you say this dude is the answer? Like, I think he's a good player. Like, I think if he goes into the right situation, bro, I think he's going to – I think he's going to emerge. Like, I think if he, if he goes to – if he if goes you, to – huh? I was about to say, if you put a three-star quarterback – that is that is not as talented as, as CJ Stroud in that offense with Ohio State. He's gonna look like a damn Heisman candidate type quarterback because of the situation. He's a he, situation. He got, he's accurate though. He's accurate as fuck. But though. even so, but even so, bro, he's gonna hit you. It's hard to miss a wide open fucking receiver, a wide open tight end. It's hard bro. to miss that shit. Like you gotta be. Super bad. That's why Jimmy. And you can t- when they run into stiff competition, it's always close game. Yeah, I mean, and, and like, like, okay, like the the only time I seen him really deal with like a pass rush was was the Michigan game, and he handled pet pressure from the edges well. But my thing too is like I haven't really seen him play a team that really was just stout up the middle where he couldn't step up and get out of the pocket. Like mm-hmm. I've seen Bryce Young. Not be be like like literally mush rushed and like like where they they kept him inside and the pocket was shrinking and he probably won't get that competition until the bowl Georgia or late in the season Georgia last year yeah Georgia you know. whooped that ass last year you talking about I mean that's why I don't like Bryce Young I don't like Bryce I don't like Bryce Young bro I, I mean I love his game I love his game but Bryce Young got his ass they got he had pressure against A and M all game long all game I mean, long. He, his thing is that, like, I think he plays better with it than, than Stroud does, but but I just think that he's just so fucking small. He's not but like... He had, but he had to. Stroud didn't have to. Bryce yeah. had to deal with that because he. this was what Alabama's historically worst offensive line they've had yeah. Yeah. in Thank the you, last, Brian. what, 10 or 15 years? Yeah. Thank you, Bill O'Brien. Yeah. <laughs> But is that's this is their worst offensive line they've had. So you know, it's it's, it's trying to compare Apple, you know, compare them. But it's tough. I mean, I I think that I think that if Bryce Young was like six two six three, I think people would be talking about him as well. Yeah, Bryce that. Young was CJ Stroud size because yeah, CJ yeah. is a slim dude. First of all, CJ Stroud is a slim dude himself. He is, yeah. Yeah. Slim. He he's six three, probably two hundred five pounds soaking with. 
If Bryce and Young I could, was and like, and I could put muscle on that on that frame. But I'm, but hold on. But if Bryce Young, frame. but if Bryce Young was was two inches taller and ten pounds heavier, if he, he was talk about this shit. If he was six one, <laughs> six two, one nine one ninety five. Nigga, that's the same damn part. That's the same damn person. I, I see two. All I see is two when I see Bryce Young. If, Bri- like- hold on, but it, hold on. But if Bryce Young and CJ Stroud were the had the same measurables, who would you take? I like CJ better. That's my preference. I like CJ first, the boy out of Kentucky third, second. Then then the boy from Florida, third. I'm not, oh, I'm not Bryce, yeah. damn you you hate Bryce then. So what like, you think, like what do you like about Stroud? I like his poise, like his ball placement. I like his way he's able to run an offense. I like the kid. I just do. I, I've, I've seen the kid play. I like the way, the way he operates. And I, we all know Oklahoma, Ohio State is the second Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, with quarterback friendly offenses. But I think he he actually real good for us. 